Okay, this is a classic problem, and you can find variations of this all over the place. Um, so this is your hanging, I call it the hanging sign problem. Is that cool? Okay. So here's the deal, and I, I just have a, I have a mass instead of a sign because it doesn't really matter. So I have a beam right here. It's supported on this wall, and then there's also a cable uh, connected to it. And this angle that it makes up here, I said, was 28 degrees. So my beam is 2.5 meters long. It has a mass of 20 kilograms which is kind of heavy, but okay. And then this is my weight hanging down with a, it exerts a force of 150 newtons. And now there is a little bit of short uh, tricks here, but, uh, and so this is a 2.1 meters away. So the question I'm going to first ask is what's the tension in that cable? So it's in equilibrium and in equilibrium means the following two things, F net vector equals zero vector. I like to say vector, I pronounce it really well torque about some point O is equal to zero. And this is the scalar version. Okay. And then in fact, we can write this as two equations, F net X equals zero, F net Y equals zero. And then the torque about any point is equal to F R zero sine theta. So if I have some beam right here and that's my point O, then I apply a force right here, F. Then this would be R0, the from point zero to the force. And then this is the angle between them for sine of theta. Yeah, okay. So the first thing we want to do is to pick our object and draw all the forces acting on it. So I'm going to just use the beam because the beam is in equilibrium. I'm going to draw the beam and all the forces acting on the beam. So here's my beam. Uh, the first force I have, it's a uniform density beam. So that means that it has a gravitational force that pulls on the whole thing, but I can apply a gravitational force at the center as though it were acting, even though it's acting everywhere, I can apply it at the center as though that were the one single force was. Next I have, now, if you put the weight of this acting on the beam, it's technically wrong, but I see what you're saying because Look, there's some tension pulling down on the beam uh, and that tension also pulls up on this weight and the weight, gravitational force pulls down on the tension on the, on the weight. So the tension pulling down on the beam has to be equal to the weight. Th there's a lot of stuff going on there that I'm glossing over, but if you just don't say the gravitational force of this on that, okay? I just don't want that. I'm gonna put it right here. So let's call this uh, F1 equals 150 newtons in the negative direction. So that'd be zero, negative one, zero, if you want it as a vector. I shouldn't have put the number there. Okay, next would also have, we'll have this tension pulling on it. So the tension pulls this way. The one thing about strings is they can only pull in the direction of the string. And I know that angle is theta. Now I do have another force on this. I have this force. I have the, the pin where it's attached to the wall. Now, the pin can push both this way and it can push up. Uh, so I could draw two forces there if I wanted to. Um, let's do that. Let's call it uh, F, FPX, and I'll put this one right down there. FPY, at P stands for the pin. Okay, I want to find the tension. Now you see here, how many things do I not know? Uh, values I do not know. I do not know T. I do not know this. I do not know that. That's three things. So in order to fully solve the problem, I would need three equations. Oh my goodness, look what I have right here. One, two, three equations. Okay. Now the question asks for the tension. So I definitely, if I can take some shortcuts, I can and I will in this case. So. I'm gonna pick this as my point O, and this comes from experience. If you don't do this, you're still a cool person, okay? Don't think that you have to know the cool tricks right away. The cool tricks come from solving tons of problems, okay? Um, so I'm going to set up the torque equation first. So I'm gonna say the torque about point O, and I'm gonna pick that as my point O, is equal to zero. Now, if I do that, what forces are gonna, everything could exert a torque. But let me start with these two. How much torque does the X pin force exert on that? Well, the force is at the point. So R is zero. 
So according to this equation, if I put zero for R, I get no torque. That has not a zero torque. What about this one? Same thing, zero torque. So these, two, by picking that as my point, these two forces go away and they have zero torque. So I don't have to worry about them. So now I can just calculate the torque by this. This is gonna be my torque, my force, mg, times my torque arm, which I'll call this, let's just call this L over two. Let's call this whole thing L. And let's call this um, S. That's my distance. Because I don't like putting numbers in because it makes me feel like a, you know, dirty, right? I want to be sophisticated, not dirty. Uh, now, what's the angle between R and MG? It's 90 degrees. And the sine of 90 is 1. Now, is that going to be a positive or negative torque? So the convention is if that force would make it rotate clockwise, we call it negative. Uh, if, it, if it by itself would make it rotate counterclockwise, that would be positive. So this is going to be a negative torque. What about this force? Well, this is the same thing, right? This is just going to be uh, minus F1 times S times sine of 90. Because, again, there are 90 degrees between that and that. And it's negative because it's clockwise. Finally, I have this force. So it's going to be, would it make it positive or negative? Well, this would make it rotate positive direction. So I'm going to say plus T. Um, and then I can say the length of that is uh, the torque arm. And then I'm going to have sine of theta. And those all have to add up to zero. And I want to solve for t. So let's add these two things to both sides. I get t l sine theta equals m g l over 2 plus f1 s. And then I can say t equals uh, m g l over 2 plus f1 s. All of that over l sine theta. And that's it. Okay, now actually let's just really quick check. I want this to have units of newtons. So this is newtons times meters, is newton meter. This is also newton meter, but on the bottom I'm dividing by meters times nothing. So I do get units of meters, so that's cool. Um, so let's put in my values. So I get, uh, uh, what did I say, 20 times 9.8 times 2.5 over 2 plus 150 times 2.1, all of that over L. 2.5 times sine of 28. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, again, this is where having an RPN calculator is super useful. I'll step you through it. If you don't have one, you can get one of these on an app on your on your phone, or just get used to your own calculator is fine too. So I'm going to say 20, enter, 9.8 times 2.5 times. I need to divide by 2, 2 divided by. Okay, so that 245 is this whole thing. Now I'm going to do that. 150, enter. You see, I didn't I didn't multiply those two yet. And then I'm going to, or add them. Now 2.1 times. Now I can add them plus. So now I have the whole thing on the top. Now I'm going to do this on the bottom. So 2.5, enter. Now 28, sine, times. Now I can divide by. And I get 477. 477 newtons. And that's the answer. Okay, I'm going to take this. There's a, a variation of this question. And the question is, if you can have a maximum tension of, let's say, 600 newtons, what angle can you put that at? Okay, so if I do that, I'm, I'm saying T max equals 600 newtons. Then what angle should that be at to, before it breaks? So you can see as I decrease this angle, then it's going to have a smaller and smaller angle. So the force, it's not going to apply as much torque. Okay, so really in this case, I have the same equation. The physics is the same. I'm, I'm just now solving for theta. Okay, I'm going to put in T max. So let me rewrite that equation up here. So I'm going to say T max uh, L sine theta equals M G L over 2 plus F1 S. Now I want to solve for sine theta, so I'm going to divide both sides by this. I get sine theta equals M G L over 2 plus F1 S. All of that over T M, which I know, times L. Now I can take the inverse sine of both sides. I get theta equals sine inverse. I know it looks crazy. Like you can't do all that. I can do it. And I'm going to go ahead and put my numbers in. So let's say mass of 20 kilograms times 9.8 
times 2.5 over 2 plus 150 times 2.1. I memorized all these numbers actually. Uh, and actually, parentheses, parentheses, all of that over T max of 600 um, times uh, L, which is 2.5. Okay. And then you just plug that in and, and that you get some angle. And I actually have someone waiting for me outside. So I'm going to end right there. And I know that's bad, but I'll put the answer data in the comments. Peace out.